Hello, this is Chanel and today I'm going to be talking about GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease or simply acid reflux. I will also discuss ways to diagnose and treat GERD. GERD is caused when stomach acid flows back into the esophagus. This happens due to a barrier change between stomach and esophagus. Over 20% of American population has experienced symptoms of GERD. GERD can occur in all age groups and is common in both men and women. The most common cause of GERD is due to an inappropriate relaxation of the LES or lower esophageal sphincter. The pressure gradient between LES and the stomach is lost. This leads to a decrease in LES tone. Acid hypersecretion states, like Bollinger ellison syndrome, have also been indicated, although very rare. Hiatal hernias does not directly cause GERD, but may worsen the symptoms. Hypercalcemia can increase gastric production and cause increased acidity, which in turn can worsen the symptoms. Other factors like increased intra-abdominal pressure, delayed gastric emptying in diabetics, and delayed esophageal clearance have also been indicated to cause worsening of symptoms of GERD. GERD presents with heartburn or pyrosis and regurgitation of food into mouth. The, these two alone have an 80% sensitivity and specificity. Patients may also complain of chest pain or discomfort. In that case, you have to rule out a cardiac pathology by doing an EKG and cardiac enzymes. Some also complain of bitter or acid taste in mouth. Water brash is increased salivation. Sensation of lump in the throat and frequent belching may also be noticed by some patients. Along with these findings, extra esophageal manifestations may also be seen, like chronic cough that does not bring up any mucus, hoarseness and voice, which might be due to acid irritating the larynx, asthma-like symptoms, dental erosions due to acid injury, and chronic sinusitis. Now, there are some symptoms that you may have to keep in mind when obtaining a history. These are called red flag, which include anemia, blood in the stool, dysphagia, which is trouble swallowing, and weight loss. If any of these symptoms are present, an endoscopy must be done to rule out any other serious pathology. Risk factors for GERD include being obese, excessive alcohol intake, smoking, asthma, being a diabetic, stress, pregnancy, and hiatal hernia, as we had mentioned earlier, and also some medicines. There are some substances which may exacerbate the symptoms of GERD. Among the most common ones are fried fatty food, spicy food, alcohol, and coffee. The diagnosis of GERD can be made by eliciting a thorough history of symptoms. If GERD is suspected, a one-month trial of PPIs or proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole may be tried. However, the most accurate test is a 24-hour pH monitoring. It is not routinely done as it is an invasive test. Manometry and barium swallow studies can also be done if the diagnosis is not clear and if you want to rule out other pathologies like achalasia, scleroderma, and esophageal spasm. Endoscopy is done when you have red flag symptoms like anemia, blood and stool, dysphagia, and weight loss. 
esophageal cancer and Barrett's esophagus can also be ruled out by endoscopy. A lot of other conditions may mimic GERD. Achalasia, which is a motor disorder with failure of LES to relax, leading to trouble swallowing of both solids and liquids. Eosinophilic esophagitis is characterized by eosinophilic infiltration of the esophageal mucosa. Food allergens may trigger this process. Esophageal cancer, which may present with red flag symptoms and trouble swallowing solids. Esophageal spasm, which may present with chest pain and GERD-like symptoms and which is made worse with cold liquids. Infectious esophagitis, which is a severe mucosal inflammation and ulceration as a result of viral or fungal infections. Candida being the most common cause. Chemical esophagitis due to ingestion of alkali and acids. The mainstay of treatment lies in lifestyle modification and medications. Avoiding trigger foods and drinks, elevating the head of the bed, and sleeping on the left side. Having a light meal in the evening, reduction of anxiety and stress, stopping smoking, and weight loss. H2 receptor blockers like ranitidine may also be helpful, but are not used as a first-line medication. Proton pump inhibitors are the most helpful. Promotility agents like metoclopramide can be helpful in patients with diabetic gastroparesis. Now, if lifestyle modifications and medications are not helpful, then surgery can be an option. In nicen fundoplication, the gastric fundus is wrapped around the esophagus. Side effect of this procedure is an inability to belch. Endocinch is a procedure where a scope is used to place a suture around LES. Local heat or radiation causes scarring, which tightens the LES. Now this procedure is done only when nothing else works. Some complications of GERD include stricture formation, ulcer, bleeding, and Barrett's esophagus.